Hello, sports fans. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Titan Sports. My name is Eric Cole, and as always, thanks for joining us. This week, we'll catch up with our very own Michael Parsons as he updates us everything with Titans Athletics, and we'll talk women's hoops with our head coach, MJ Baker. But first, let's kickstart things and talk men's soccer. Please welcome back to the show, head coach Oliver Twelve Trees. Hey, coach. Hey, Eric. How are you? Good to see you, and you have a, uh, a wonderful player here next to you. Who do you got with you, coach? We do. We're lucky enough to have Danilo Orsi Dodomo here from uh, London, England. He's our top scorer this year. Tell you what, Danilo, welcome to the show. Welcome to Inside Titan Sports. Thank you for having me. I'll tell you what, you've set some records for Titans uh, soccer. You set the single season mark and you broke your own record. Now you have the most cumulative goals in Titans history. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So what, what's the secret? What's the secret? You're, you're kind of quiet here, but uh, I've seen you on the field. You're quite explosive. No, it's just um, a lot of hard work behind the scenes, really. And it's made basically thanks down to the team okay. for getting behind me and the coaching staff for having the belief. When I was first recruited here, Coach Tree said to me, I've got the ability to do it. And from then, I kind of just thought I want to prove, prove everyone that he was right and he's a great coach and I know I can go on and break some records and thankfully I've done it. That's pretty good. Now, how did you find uh, Eastern Florida and Coach Twelve Trees? That's a special story. Right, well, um, I was out, out in Tampa playing. Coach Twelve Trees came down and saw me, said he was really interested in having me here at Eastern Florida and we just connected and I knew straight away that this was, this was the place I wanted to be and further my footballing career. That's pretty good. Now, Coach, having a special player like this, you guys have had a special run now. Uh, a couple mid-season losses to high-ranked teams, but now you guys have rattled off uh, quite a few in a row. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, the season is about the journey, you know, and the players have to, you know, grow in that journey. And, yeah, we overcome some, some obstacles early on, a couple of losses, you know, back-to-back, -back, which, you know, really helped us find ourselves as a team and, and what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, we've all been working hard to, to put those wrongs right, and uh, we certainly put one of those wrongs right last week against Daytona, so that was very nice. I'll talk about that. That was a pretty special payback, 5-1 winner, and they were opening up a new uh, stadium, so that had to feel pretty good because there's some... There's some rivalry and some energy there, Coach. Yeah, you know, they've got a great program, you know, a good bunch of boys and a quality coaching staff, so it's always going to be the rivalry there, and, and we enjoyed, uh, you know, getting our own back on them, and now it'll, it'll maybe come down to one more game to see who advances out of Florida into the, into the district tournament. So it's a, it's a great rivalry, and we want to keep it going. So, Danilo, how do you guys get ready for postseason now? It's a sophomore-laden group. Uh, you know a group that's been together, but uh, how do you make that run in the postseason to try to get to Prescott, Arizona? Well, I think we just think about what happened last year, really and that drives us to go forward and make sure it doesn't happen again. And we know that now going into the postseason, it's lose and you go home. So really it comes down to each game, each minute, each kick of the ball almost defines what, how the season's going to pan out at the end of it. Now, Coach, you obviously every season has new challenges, new opportunities. Now since you've got a lot of matches under your belt now, won a lot of games and getting set up for postseason, what do you feel about this group, Coach? Yeah, no, I think from, from day one, we've always had the talent, you know, that, that was never in question. It's just uh, getting the chemistry right and getting the balance of the team right and, um, and, and who's going to play. And, and some guys have had to sacrifice a little bit and, and not be those uh, superstar players and not start as every minute of every game. So, you know, we've had to sacrifice and really put the team first. And, and since we've done that, since we've been more selfless, not selfish, we've had a, a fantastic run of results. And, and it's shown with, uh, you know, Danilo scoring a lot of goals and not only scoring the goals, but assisting the goals. And then and, you know, we have Haim Rosary, who's another fantastic talent, who's uh, broke the record for assists in a season as well. So, um, you know, we've got some great performers that are all working together to achieve that common goal. You know, speaking of Haim Rosary, 13 assists, you've got to have a guy that dishes it up to Danilo. Talk about Haim Rosary as he is as a player. Oh, he's a fantastic player to play with. I love every moment I'm playing on the pitch with him. He's just always got that eye to pick out a final pass. And since the start, since he was here in the spring, we kind of connected and he just knows where to find me and when to find me at the right times. Well, that's pretty good. Now, Eastern Florida's been kind of a family culture, and Coach Twelve Trees does a great job getting everybody together. How do you guys come together as players that are coming from different parts of the country and different parts of the world? Well, I think it's all about buying into the coach's mentality to begin with. So they have a goal, and we've, everyone's got to buy into it. And like you said, players have had to sacrifice and not be the big star players that they may have thought they were going to be. And I think that's really helped everyone get together and everyone's willing to work for each other and almost break their backs to make sure the team does well and we progress as far as we should. And Daniil also in Coach Twelve Trees, uh, I think a couple of those games against Monroe and Daytona State, you know, you didn't win those matches, but there was great benefit and dividend that really has got you guys to reset everything, recalibrate. Coach, what do you think about that? 
Yeah, certainly. You know, we, we learn from those experiences. You know, you learn more sometimes in a loss than you do in the victories. And we learned for those, from those defeats and, and became a better team from it. And, you know, in terms of, you know, building that chemistry and that camaraderie runs the boy, with the boys, there's a great team spirit right now. Just a fantastic spirit with the boys. And, and as a group, you know, we try and get, let the boys enjoy it too. They've got to be enjoying their football. They've got to be enjoying coming to training. And so, you know, we always do something the day before a game just for a bit of banter with the lads called, called the Blue Jersey. And, you know, Danny had it last week, you know, and... Um, you know, we always have some fun. It's actually more of a blue dress than a, than a jersey <laughs> okay. now that the boys have to wear if they uh, if they do something silly. But uh, you know, we always have some fun with the boys. You know, when we're on the road, you know, the boys are singing on the bus and, and chanting, and you know, coaching staff get involved in that once in a while as well. So it's uh, you know, they've got to be enjoying their football, and that, I think that's really the key to it. Make sure they're focused, but as well as having fun. You know, Danilo. Speaking of that, uh, talk about coach. Obviously, he's. He's buttoned up a lot, but uh, tell us some fun, maybe a fun story you know, about Coach 12 Trees. Well, um, hopefully I don't get in too much trouble. No, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> At the um, start of the season, we had a little uh, sing song, and Coach 12 Trees got up and uh, I think was reminiscing his younger days singing <laughs> Wonderwall by Oasis. Oh, nice. <laughs> While holding a uh, remote control, which was uh, one of the highlights of the season so far, I think. <laughs> I'll be darn, that's great. So now, uh, when you do travel by uh, car or bus, per se, uh, you get some time to be together. Uh, what do you guys do to pass the time? Sing songs, really. That's it. Everyone just gets together. Everyone loves a sing song. No one judges anyone. I'm probably the worst singer out there. Okay. So um, for me, at, at the first it was hard, but like all the boys have a great laugh and we all get on well. So we just sing songs, have a laugh, tell stories, and just, just enjoy each other's companies while it's last. It's such a short season. It really is, especially when you only play two years at this level. Uh, talk about uh, the brand of Eastern Florida that Coach 12 Trees has put together. When you talk to your friends, you really got to be proud of where you play college uh, soccer. You know, it's a fantastic brand. It's just getting bigger and bigger each year. And but the main thing is as Trees is building it, we've got to continue to build it ourselves. We've got to put in the performances on the pitch and make sure we get the results so everyone can see what a great college this is and all the top recruits want to come here and further their careers here. So Coach 12 Trees set up the postseason now. It's been an exciting year. Now you're chasing the cup in Prescott, Arizona. How does it set up? What does it somewhat look like for some of our viewers? Yeah, you know, I'm really proud so far of what the boys have accomplished. And, you know, Danilo in particular, you know, it's, it's a fantastic record to really show that he's the all-time leading goal scorer in Eastern Florida history and proven that he's the best striker to wear that number nine jersey, you know. At, and there's been some great players that have played for us and scored goals. So hopefully he's going to continue scoring goals into the playoffs, which is going to look like if we can get a home field advantage for the region final, which will be okay. next Saturday, October 28th. Hopefully in Eastern Florida, if we can win our last game. And then um, if we win that, we'll go on and, and take, go on the road and take on the best two teams from uh, the Carolinas and Virginia. So it could be a Richard Bland, a Lewisburg, um, a Spartanburg maybe. So we have to win a semifinal and a final on the road there, which is a, is a tough ask and a tough road trip that we'll have to make. If we win those two games, then we get a berth at the national tournament in Prescott, Arizona, and that'll be the 12 best teams in the country. And, and we know if we can get to that point, we're definitely going to be pushing for a national title. Now, Coach, what is your message to the team as they chase the cup to, to bring home that title and that banner to Eastern Florida? Yeah, you know, you've got to keep enjoying your football every day and, and believe in the process, keep working hard, keep doing the little things right, and then it'll add up to those, that big victory that we want at the end of the day. And Danilo, as you as a player, what do you got to do? What's your message to your other players of like, hey, this is a time to get together, let's bring home that championship yeah, I cup? Think, I think we've just got to stay humble. And we've got a bit of a team motto, which is improve 1% every day. I think if we can keep keep that going and keep our feet on the ground, we can achieve great things and hopefully bring home a national title to the to the college. Well, Danilo, we're lucky to have you. Thank Congratulations, you. Coach man. Twelve Trees. Thanks, Eric. We're going to take a short break. Come back and talk women's hoops. This is Inside Titan Sports. Stay right there. Create the career of your dreams with a degree from Eastern Florida State College. Earn a bachelor's degree, associate's degree or college certificate in growing job fields like healthcare, business, and computer technology. On campus or online, you can find inspiration and success. Anything's possible where Titans rise. Eastern Florida State College. Hey fans, welcome back to Inside Titan Sports. Time to talk women's hoops. Please welcome back the head coach for your Titans, MJ Baker. Hey coach. Hey, how are you? Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good to be back. I'll tell you what, a lot has transpired. You came to us in April, mm -hmm. new head coach of the women's, and, and now all of a sudden 
women's hoop seasons right here. Talk about the whole last few months has had to be crazy. Yeah, it's been exciting. We brought in, uh, we have four returners coming back, and then I brought two players with me from Broward, okay. and then the rest of the group is new. Wow. So it's been a lot of learning, uh, just getting to know what we want out of the team and the program as far as our culture and just setting the tone. Um, even with my assistant coaches and us just learning, just hitting the ground running. So, I mean, the short time in April, though, that, that's a lot to do. I mean, you got family, you, you moved, you got settled in, you just got a house. I mean, you got a lot of moving parts. Uh, have you had a chance to breathe any? No, no. And sleep, <laughs> sleep deprivation is something that is okay. just normal for us. But, I mean, it is what it is. I'm just blessed to have this opportunity and to be a mom and be able to coach and just have it all and also be a wife, obviously. So it's just – and then have 15 little sisters running around trying to help them with their life. So it's just been – it's been incredible, but obviously it is kind of wearing at times, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, we're lucky to have you. Thank you. So now you've had some good preseason opportunities up in Georgia and Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity to check out your team. What did you draw off those two events? Uh, that we are very good when it comes to pressuring and playing together, um, but we lack in the area of Decision making still. Okay. Um, we played some really tough. We played Northwest Florida and East Mississippi were the two losses that we suffered, um, and they were just a pressuring, just a smarter team on defense, and we did a very good job executing. But then we played four other teams that we won that we did a great job of just playing together. So the times that we played together and we kept our calm, kept our cool, and made great decisions, we ended up coming out with success. Even though winning and losing is not what it's about, it's obviously about getting better. But it just flowed better. Um, then when we got pressured by East Mississippi and Northwest Florida, which is a more pressured defensive team, they kind of bullied us a little bit okay. that we have to learn how to handle that a little bit better. So now how did the ladies bounce back from that? How do they kind of adjust to get that you know, early experience of getting that press? How do, you, how do you break that with these new ladies? Well, that's a great question. Actually, we bounced back from both those games of the win. Nice. Um, it made the next game not look as bad in okay. the sense of we, we went at the next opponent being fearless. But we just have to be able to have that mentality every game, the sense of just being fearless no matter who we play. Make people earn the respect, don't just give them the respect. And so that's something that we're trying to learn as a team, um, just believing in ourselves and understand how good we really can be if we play together. Another opportunity, when you go on the road like that, it's a great opportunity for synergy and create that camaraderie within the squad. Talk about that. Yeah, I'm hoping we're a good road team because we're on okay. the road for the first month of I our saw season. That. Yeah, so we don't, we're not home till December. Wow. So um, that's one thing that if you want to be a great team, you have to win on the road. Um, with us all coming together, I felt like the road would be a better situation for us to come together in the sense of what you're talking about because, I mean, it can either make or break you and you need to be able to win on the road. So we're about to find out how much of a road team we are, and I'm praying that we, we, we pull it off. <laughs> now, this is a great opportunity for MJ to, to put your stamp on the program here mm -hmm. at Eastern Florida. Very proud, you know, after the, the classic legacy of Jim Grimes. Yeah. I think it's a great story uh, to bring your energy here to keep that alive. Now, you brought a couple players with Broward. Mm -hmm. You had success for years at Broward. Mm -hmm. What is the logistics of bringing a player from a former school? Do they get a play right away at this level? Yeah, they do, as long as okay. they're not in conference. And since okay. we moved conference and now we're in the Sun Coast Conference, then they get to play right away. So that's been great for them. Actually, uh, one of them's playing right now. The other one's tweaked with the meniscus. So who, hopefully she plays soon. But yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's a compliment right there to have two players that want to follow MJ Baker. Yeah, I know. I'm, right? I'm, I'm just humbled by it all. I mean, they're, they're two great players and they just, they want to be anywhere else. They came to Broward because of me and when I left, they wanted to come with me and their parents and their family supported them 100% and that's wanted great. the same. And thank goodness um, our athletic director, Bob Deutschman at Broward, was very supportive of it as well. So. Now, you said some of the key ingredients of what you want to build a program is. You talked about, I think there's three ingredients that uh, you think success makes a program. Talk about those for MJ right. Baker style. Yeah, it's passions first. We, okay. we want to love the game, um, just loving the game and having fun and just knowing why you play the game because a lot of times you lose that, um, especially at this level because it's so intense and the training so intense. Just finding that passion and love for each other, love for the game, and then also the people, just knowing who you're involved with, understanding that it's not about you, it's about the team being selfless in the situation, and then just having pride and purpose. Um, just understanding that the game is a great game, but the ball is going to stop bouncing. Right. So learning what you can from the game as far as life lessons and just embracing every moment and understanding that there's a bigger purpose in all this and that you can play inspiring no matter where you're at. There's always someone watching. And the one thing, too, that you take pride in, too, is to have that personnel of the backing of 
athletic director Jeff Carr mm -hmm. and his staff that really make you guys feel part of the family. Talk about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jeff Carr and the whole staff, the whole athletic department has been amazing. I've never been around an athletic department that's so loving and so embracing and just so supportive. I mean, we they if it's well, so far in the fall, we've been the volleyball games, the so soccer games, like everyone just loves on each other and just supports each other no matter how the season's going. We're always there to uplift each other. I've never been a part of athletic group department where it's from every coach, every player, um, acknowledge each other and just show each other support. Now talk about some of the players, only four returning starters, mm -hmm. or four, four returning, returning players you should say. Uh, talk about some of those players that are here that are trying to get into your style now. Yeah, um, a couple of them are hurt, so right now it's just Mariah who's really playing, okay. um, and Mariah's been great. She's had the last two weekends, she's just been phenomenal. She's our most consistent offensive weapon that we have right now. Um, I've had a lot of feedback that Mariah's grown a lot since last year. And just watching her grow as a person, just finding her confidence, and then also believing in her teammates and trusting each other um, has been awesome. She's been really shooting the ball really well for us, and she's getting some great looks right now, which is what we're, what we're about is for her to move forward. So Mariah's just been a key for us as far as toughness and consistency. So this year with your squad, for some of the personnel that you see, what does the team look like? What type of tempo? Are you shooting team, press team? What does it look like so far? Yeah, well, early in the, earlier in the year, which was August, I would assume that we'd be more pressing and up in people's um, up in people and pressure them. But right now we're kind of coming. I don't know if there's a cloud over my head or something, but <laughs> um, we've been coming across some injuries that just fluke injuries um, okay. that puts them out for two or three weeks or four weeks. Um, we've had two kids we're waiting to get cleared from ACL, so we are down to really nine players right now. Um, so. Based on that, we kind of have to be more conscientious and purposeful in how we use them as far as miles we put on their body because obviously we can't really suffer a lot more injuries. So we right. can't play as aggressive as we want to when we get these players back. We'll be able to be a little bit more aggressive. But it's definitely team first ball. We're playing a little bit of small ball, passing the ball around, just working working people and just playing team ball, not about a one-on-five on, one on five isolation. Um, it's kind of what we're, we're emphasizing is just playing the small ball and doing the pass, outpassing people, outworking people, doing the little things. Now speaking of little things, obviously you only get a look at these ladies for two years. Mm -hmm. What's the dynamic and makeup in terms of, do you have some vocal leaders? Are you starting to see the kids shine the locker room to be the vocal to, to make that next step to bring everybody together through all these injuries? Yeah, um, Victoria and Mariah, because Vic's actually another returner um, that's playing right now. She's doing really well, but Victoria and Mariah are returners that have been vocal for us. And then we have Brianna Lewis come from Chicago. She transferred from Texas Southern, and she's a little pit bull that's just <laughs> nice. out there leading the team. Um, and then we have Claire Body, who came from, Claire Body, who came with me from Broward, who's from France, and she's another one. So we actually have a lot of people who have stepped up and are great leaders. Um, vocally and through the work ethic, um, which has been awesome because that's one thing I want them to take ownership of the team. And I feel like we don't just lean on one person. We have a lot of people we can lean on, which has been a big time helpful in the coaching staff because they're an extension to us. Well, now you said that the first home game at Titan Fieldhouse is not till December. So how do you keep that energy going for these young gals to to keep it going being away from the home cooking? I mean, we just keep preaching to them that great teams have to win on the road and we'll, we'll get challenged early and figure out what we're made of and that championships are not won in November and December. They're won in January and February is when conference starts. So obviously all of this is just prepping us and I believe in tough love and we're gonna definitely face the toughness on the on the road. So being able to hit that adversity early, I think something that's good for us because even though we're all new to each other, we have 10 sophomores. So with that said, I mean, we need to come together quickly, and I believe on the road's the best time to do it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a great opportunity to bring the, bring the ladies together on the road because, you know, that might set it up for a very good season for you. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. Once conference starts, we're like home. So we're only away, I think, four times. So it's, it, I think it's going to be a great setup as long as we just continue to hopefully stay healthy. Well, I'll tell you what, Coach, love your energy. Thank welcome you. Welcome to the family. I appreciate that. And you're always welcome on the show. Thank you. That's MJ Baker. We're going to take a short break. This is Inside Titan Sports. Create the career of your dreams with a degree from Eastern Florida State College. Earn a bachelor's degree, associate's degree, or college certificate in growing job fields like healthcare, business, and computer technology. On campus or online, you can find inspiration and success. Anything's possible where Titans rise. Eastern Florida State College. Hey fans, welcome back to Inside Titan Sports. Now it's time to catch up with Mr. Titans himself, Mr. Michael Parsons, Manager of Athletic Communications. Michael, what's up, buddy? 
Not too much, not too much. Another big week for us, so it's good. It's always good. Busy time now, obviously, uh, Coach Carr and the women's soccer team. Great team again this season, um, but suffered a tough double overtime loss. Talk about that game real quick. Yeah, Monday night, it was, it was a great game. And uh, it, was, it was fun because we had a lot of excitement. The other, uh, the other sports, MJ Baker was, was talking about the women's uh, basketball coach about right. how everybody supports each other. And, and that was the case Monday night. You know, the baseball team, the men's soccer team, the volleyball team, they were all out, the women's basketball, they were all out, men's basketball. All, everybody was out and cheering loud, and, and it was really a good atmosphere. But um, unfortunately, you know, uh, Daytona found that little magic that it takes in double overtime because right. everybody's just tired. You know, at, at that point, everybody's tired, and you're not seeing uh, the best soccer. But... Um, they found that magic with 34 seconds left. We, we thought it was going to be a tie for sure, um, and, and they, they kind of stole one, which, you know, that's, that's a tough loss for the, for the women. But um, at the end of the day, it's just a regular season loss. You know, everybody's going to go to the playoffs, you know, and we'll, we're going to meet them again, I'm sure. You know, that's just kind of the way this conference has been this year. So speaking of that, what does the postseason look like for the women's soccer team? Yeah, so the women play on Friday, their last regular season game. They'll play ASA Miami at ASA Miami Friday afternoon. And then uh, next weekend, the Daytona State has the new, the new stadium, and right. so they'll host the, the tournament this year. And so they'll do semifinals on Friday and then finals on Sunday. And so four teams all go, so uh, we'll be the number two seed. So we'll play the semis on, on Friday, probably the first game of the day. Um, figuring Daytona State being the host will be the number one, so they'll probably play the night game, and then uh, Sunday the winners will meet. ASA, though, talk about that. I was doing some research before I uh, did the show this week. 17-0? Yeah. That was the score of the soccer match. Yeah, it really was, and uh, wow. it, was, it was something to watch. And, uh, <laughs> you know, sophomore Katie Lockwood was amazing. Uh, she had four goals in that game. She actually had eight goals on the, on the week. Uh, she was our athlete of the week. And deservedly so, she had eight goals in the week. So she scored four against Polk earlier in the week, and then she scored four more against ASA. And, and you know, it was it was one of those games that, that you could see the team really coming together and playing really well. You know, ASA College is struggling a little bit um, this year with numbers and things, but um, you could see our team was really putting it together through that game. So it was, it was good to see. So now what does it take for the women's soccer team led by Jeff Carr to get to the national tournament that we get to host at Titan Soccer Complex. Yeah, now it's just a, a you know win mentality now. Okay. You know, um, postseason's always like that, anyways, and and that's why I said you know it's a tough loss, and and you know luckily it happened in the regular season. You know, you don't, you'd hate to see something like that happen in the postseason when right, you're done, right. where you know they get to live for tomorrow. You know, uh, Coach Carr always has the saying, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow, and and the sun's definitely out today, and and you know they have another chance. Friday, tomorrow, to have a big game against ASA College again and get themselves right for the tournament next week. And, and you know, next weekend it's just a matter of, of doing the little things and, and getting that win, you know, in, the, in both the semis and finals, and then you move on and, and you'll play somebody in Mississippi for the right to go back to the national championship tournament. So, you know, we're really still feeling the same as we were before that there's absolutely no reason this team can't be one of those teams on the pitch on that Monday. Now talk about other postseason. Let's jump board and talk some other sports. Women's volleyball. Yeah. They're getting ready for postseason. Exciting time for Coach Andrew Rasmussen. They definitely are. Tonight uh, they're actually playing, you know, Central Florida, who's the number one team. So um, that's the last of their regular season. Okay. And they've already pretty much locked up a spot so that they'll be playing next Tuesday night uh, at Polk in the first round of their postseason. And, you know, that's the first time we were talking. I was talking to Coach Rasmussen. Uh, a little bit ago, and it's the first time we can really remember that the volleyball team's been in the postseason. So, right. you know, that program's really been good this year. Um, you know, they were ranked for the first time earlier in the season, and now they're in the postseason. And so, you know, Polk's a team they beat earlier in the season, so there's no reason that they can't go to Polk and, and get a win and, and advance in the postseason as well. So it's, you know, it's a fun time, and unfortunately a lot, not a lot are home. So right. I either got to hit the road or, or I got to watch and hope that, for the best. So... That's pretty good. Now let's talk uh, men's and women's golf. Let's hit the links. How are they doing? Yeah, they're doing really well. Um, the women's team just came off another tournament against a bunch of Division II teams and, and fared pretty well. Um, the men's team, you know, we had Coach Howell on talking about that big win that they're coming off, and they play the fun event this weekend, you know, and, and it's always a, a fun event for me to go watch just because 
as a golf fan, you just think the Ryder Cup's this cool yeah. side event, you know, and so we play Florida Tech, so it's Florida Tech versus Eastern Florida. And, nice. And we play like a Ryder Cup, and, you know, so Friday, it'll be best ball. Yeah. So you'll have the teams, and they'll do the best ball on Friday, and then Saturday morning, they'll do an alternate shot. So, you know, it's just you keep playing with two, but it's an alternate shot, and then they break up into singles in the afternoon. And so it's a true Ryder Cup event with Florida Tech. We've it's called the Collegiate Cup, and we've we've done it for quite a few years now, and and we look forward to getting the cup back for bragging rights. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and and you know, um, both coaches are you know very good coaches, and and their teams are always good. So it's a fun couple of days of golf that that you get to see them play in a different kind of atmosphere, and you know the guys really have some fun with it. And now the women's is added this year, so it'll be interesting to see that dynamic added to what we've seen in the men's before. I think it's great for both those programs. Uh, hoop season's here, men's and women's. We had MJ Baker, yeah. uh, head coach of women's here, and then Jeremy Shulman was last week. Yeah. Uh, wow, season's upon us. Exciting time. It really is. And the men's basketball team, you know, Street and Smith's ranked them number three in the postseason, in the preseason uh, uh, JUCO rankings uh, this last week, so that was good to see. So they're actually in the Street and Smith's magazine. Um, Ahmed Ali, who's their point guard, he was on the second team uh, for preseason super softs, they call him. Wow. And then Shaq Carter was on the third team. You know, Shaq Carter just recently announced that he's going to attend Rutgers next year. Um, so, you know, big things all the way across the board there. And, and it's not what you wouldn't expect. We had Jeremy on a couple weeks ago, and, and, you know, he's reloaded and ready for a new season. And uh, the number three, you know, preseason ranking is a, is a good way to start the season, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of basketball, I saw the new graphic for the Paradise Jam. The, yeah. the women's, uh, you know, women's across the board college basketball is going to be here in Melbourne. Talk about that event. Yeah, definitely. We're really excited. We're uh, we're in the planning stages, which is really interesting because it's something totally different. But it's going to be a lot of fun, and that's you know we're hosting four Division One NCAA uh, women's basketball teams during Thanksgiving week. So um, for me, it's going to be a uh, really fun afterwards to talk about my two weeks because oh, yeah. I'm going to be, you know, running a national championship tournament for women's soccer for yeah. us that hopefully we, you know, I was joking with Coach Carl, well, hopefully, you know, Sunday night you're celebrating a national championship <laughs> and then Monday morning we come back and start setting up for a Division One women's basketball tournament. So, but what a couple of weeks, you know, you get to host the national championship on our own team, on our own court campus and then right after that we're going to host two four really good women's basketball teams you know West Virginia Virginia Tech Butler and Drexel I mean you couldn't ask for for better basketball in this area in Thanksgiving week well it's great exposure especially within college basketball circles to know that Melbourne and eastern Florida is a place to be uh talk about tennis how's Bobby Cashman settling as a head coach of the tennis teams very good very good uh he's had a couple of really good tournaments you know he's playing the fall, just like golf is, the fall is more of their, you know, let's get ready for the championship season. And so he's playing a lot of Division II teams. Um, his men's team actually went to Weber, I believe it was Weber last week, and uh, oh, Palm Beach Atlantic. Went to Palm Beach Atlantic last week and uh, fared really well. Um, had one finish second overall in the number one singles, had another finish third. So, um, you know, really looking good. And they have a big tournament coming up not this weekend, but next weekend at Bethune-Cookman where they're playing a bunch of really good teams. It's called the Juan Verón Memorial. So they're looking forward. They've been getting ready for that. So, you know, they look like they're just reloaded and ready to go as well. I'll tell you what, appreciate the Titans update. Michael, you're always welcome on the show. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That's all the time we have for Inside Titan Sports. Catch us every Thursday. For my producer, Rob Landers and Sam Hansler, my name is Eric Cole. And remember, anything and everything for Titans Athletics, visit us online, efsctitans.com. Remember, Eastern Florida, where Titans rise. <laughs>